I'm David Wallace Wells. I'm the author of The Uninhabitable Earth, which is an effort to pull back from the daily news about climate and take a big picture stock of the situation. And that big picture is really quite bleak. I started reading and writing about climate a few years ago, not as an environmentalist, not as an advocate, but just as a journalist who had an interest in the near future. And all of the news from research, from science I was seeing was much, much scarier than the stories that I was reading about in my newspapers, on seeing on my television. I'm a quite unlikely environmental alarmist, very unlike many of the people I know who devoted their entire lives to the cause. But I am where I am now, as scared as I am about the planet and writing in the ways that I'm writing about it, because I see the news from science and it is horrifying. We're doing the damage faster and the impacts are hitting us much faster. Um, it's happening in many more places around the world, in fact, everywhere around the world. This is not just a matter of sea level rise, but it's about agriculture and public health. It affects economic productivity. It even affects the rate at which we go to war with one another. My book is an effort to address the science, explain the science to those who haven't dove into it themselves. My writing process was really just collecting and collating news from science. I mean, in a certain way, I wrote the book right off of my Twitter feed. I also interviewed a number of scientists and spoke to a number of people who devoted their lives to the cause to really speak in a kind of off-the-record way with the people who knew the subject best, many of whom spoke in those contexts in much more alarmist terms than they allowed themselves to speak in public. By the end of the century, if we don't change course, we're likely to be about 4.3 degrees Celsius warmer than we were before the Industrial Revolution, and we're likely to have about 500 parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere. The last time the air was that thick with carbon, the last time the planet was that much warmer, there were alligators in the Arctic. Every year, the average American, just by going about their daily life, melts about 10,000 feet of Arctic ice. Every minute, they add five gallons of water to the ocean. And every time they hop on a plane from New York to London, they melt nine square meters of ice. Scientists expect that by the middle of the century, only in a couple of decades, many of the biggest cities in India and the Middle East will be that unlivably hot. That is, especially in summer, you will not be able to go outside, you will not be able to work outside, especially without risking heat stroke and possibly death. The part of my book that deals with science is um, organized into 12 chapters, each of which is around a discrete threat, so food security. If we get to four or five degrees of warming by the end of the century, our agricultural yields may be half as strong as they are today, and we may have as many as twice as many people to feed. The best economic research suggests that we could have as much as a third less economic activity as we would without climate change by the end of the century. That's an impact that's more than twice as deep as the Great Depression, and it would be permanent. So one big question is why we've let it get to this point. The UN established its, uh, its climate body in 1992, and we've emitted more carbon into the atmosphere since then than we did in all of the centuries, all of the millennia before that, which means we've now done more damage to the planet knowingly than we ever managed in ignorance. How could that possibly be? The real basic infrastructure of the modern world that we've come to understand as permanent could be shaken in some very, very profound ways by the impacts that are coming. And it's possible that those impacts will be averted. It's possible that we'll organize and um, you know, cut our emissions and, and rebuild our infrastructure, rethink our agriculture in ways that allow us to avoid them. But if not, it's not easy to imagine the world that we know today surviving in a recognizable form in the coming decades. None of us are safe from climate change. All of us will be affected in the coming decades, and many of us in some very, very scary and dramatic ways.